your freaking seatbelts because it's gonna be a long video today. That's right, this is one of the longest reacts that I've done. It's a big, big boy, a big booty boy, a big booty butt cheek boy. It's a big fucking big, big, a big, 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 big. I always say I want these videos to be longer and <laughs> it's happening. The Last Church is what we are watching today, which I do know is a short story. Um, so my guess of today is that it's probably going to be another like audio recording of it, like the audio book, and then hopefully a really freaking good fan animation because those are my favorite things. Happy Warhammer Wednesday. I really hope you have a fun time. I'm really excited to watch this video. I'm all like set to get snuggled in and get like all like cozy and like watch a movie with you guys because that's basically what's happening. An hour and 10 minutes is so long. We get a whole story and it's not broken up. Like I get it all right here. This is great. So I'm gonna have to cut this short. I'm gonna have to cut this part short. The following fan work is unofficial and in no way endorsed by Games Workshop. Our favorite thing to read. Adaptation of The Last Church by Graham McNeil. Mm. All right. Just right into it, okay. I'm stoked. Art direction by Tony Caesar. Already looks beautiful, we love it. Okay. Are we in the last church? Is that where we're at? Adapted and edited type of tire version. I don't need to read all of these. You know how to read. It's fine. Ooh. I like the like stage and the curtain. I was gonna say, oh, we're in a church. No fucking shit, we're in a church. It literally says the... A little sleepy man. <gasps> oh. Nothing good ever happens when there's a thunderstorm. <laughs> it's Aw, you're lighting a candle. That was nice. That was a real flame. Ooh, you lighten the whole place up. Okay. I see you. I like that. Church and Warhammer just sounds fucking wild combination of things, so I'm curious on what's gonna happen here. Do we light the church up every night, or is this a special night? Nope, you were expecting someone. Are you smiling? No, you're not smiling anymore. It sounds scary. I wouldn't be smiling. Shit makes me nervous. Sir, are you gonna die? That's a very thin door. I feel like that bitch could have just like shoulder checked it and it would have exploded. I'm an old man. Please. I'm an old man. Stop. Welcome to the Church of the Folger Lapis. Do you wish to join us tonight? I don't recognize you. No. I don't expect you would. I'm get out. Nor would oh. I expect us to be anyone besides you and I. All right, mysterious. Well, this is a surprise. My midnight sermons are considered quite popular in these parts. You're sure? Quite. What a shame. I had not thought I'd age so poorly as to scare so many away. <laughs> <laughs> it is rare to find a man like you with a sense of humor. I have found that most of your kind are dour leaden-hearted men. Mm. My kind? Uh-oh. Priests. Oh. Then I fear you have only met the wrong kind. Oh. Besides, given the times we live in, any servants of the divine would find it extremely difficult to be of good cheer. I mean, yeah, Very 100%. True. In a world filled with only war, <laughs> it's really hard to be cheerful and happy. You guys are gonna hug or something now? Or are you gonna kill this old man? Please don't Amethair, kill this old man. Last priest of the Church of the Folger. Oh, the last Might one. Might I have your name? My name is unimportant. Okay, However, that's rude. you may call me Apocalypsis. Apocalypsis? An unusual name for one who professes a dislike of priests. That's a wild ass name. You are aware of the significance of such a word? I am. It is suiting for tonight, however. And why exactly would that Is there an apocalypse? Be? What revelations do you search for in my humble church? I seek no revelation. I simply wish to talk to you. 
I wish to learn what keeps you here when the world is abandoning your beliefs in gods and divinity. We're going to get into some deep I wish conversation. To understand why you have yet to turn to the faith of science and reason. Oh, damn. I... The great fresco of Isandula. A divine work. Wouldn't you agree? It is quite magnificent. I want those paintings on my divine? ceiling. divine? I don't think so. <laughs> then you have not looked closely enough. Open your heart to its beauty, and you will feel the spirit of God move within you. And the whole world came running when the fresco was revealed, and the sight of it was enough to reduce all who saw it to stunned silence. Whoa. Ah, so you have read your Vastare. So I have. Interesting. You are a student of art? I have studied much. Art is indeed one of my interests. Then you cannot argue that this work was not inspired by a higher power. Of course I can. I do not seek to diminish the artist's sublime work through allocating praise upon a greater being. Her artistry does not prove the existence of anything. No god has ever created art. In an earlier I'm age, inclined to agree with this man. considered such a sentiment blasphemy. I am inclined I to agree with this man. I have only seen mortal men accuse anyone of blasphemy, oh! Uriah. I have only ever seen mortal men act upon it. For oh! reactions to the accusations, any less violent, Burn! I would label it a victimless crime. <laughs> Damn, this man spitting out facts. Touché. But I have yet to see any scientist discover the root of inspiration. The human mind is a wondrous thing. Do not be so quick to underestimate it. Tell me, Uriah, have you ever seen the great cliff sculptures of the Mariana Canyon? No, though I have heard they are incredibly beautiful. They are indeed. Thousand meter high representations of their kings carved in stone that no weapon or drill can cut. They are at least as incredible as this fresco, worked into a cliff that had not seen sunlight in 10,000 years, yet carved by a godless people in a forgotten age. True art requires no divine rationale. It is just art. I'm, you have I'm loving opinion. this hood, man. I He's speaking mine. to my soul. Isandula was a genius and a magnificent artist. That much is beyond question. I mean, but yeah. But she still had to make a living. Absolutely. And even magnificent artists must take commissions where they are to be found. <laughs> Interesting. I am sure this work paid well, for the churches of her time were oh. obscenely wealthy. Oh. Do you believe that she would be incapable of such a wondrous hmm. feat if she had been employed yes, by all the secular questions. government? She very well may have, but unfortunately we shall never know. No, we won't. We are fickle creatures, Uriah. All too often I am tempted to believe that the invocation of the divine is a ploy by the jealous to dismiss one's accomplishments. Mm. <laughs> Jealousy? Absolutely. To see another succeed where you may have failed is a sobering thing. Some would rather choose to remain ignorant of their limitations. That is a very cynical view of humanity. Forgive me. But I have seen too much darkness to be so innocent as to always assume good intentions. Do not mistake my intentions, however. Only in understanding our weakness may we find strength. Why are you here again? <laughs> well, this has been an interesting discussion, but you must excuse me, friend Apocalypsis. I have to prepare for my congregation. I don't think anyone's showing up, baby. No one is coming. It is just you and I. Why are you really here? This is the last church on Terra. I think he's gonna History kill this will guy. Soon be done with places like this, and I want a memory of it before it is Leave gone. Leave this man in his church alone. If this is so, then come, friend. Let us sit. I would rather not stand for whatever time remains. Huh. Starting to get what's happening now. A little bit, I think, possibly. Maybe. Still have many a questions. Oh. Leave it to the random priest to have alcohol in his cupboard. Ain't they always? Ain't they always the drinky drinky type? <laughs> oh, I like the art a lot. It makes me so happy. It's just cute. Your good health. And yours. This is very good wine. It's old. <laughs> you have a fine appreciation of wine, friend Apocalypsis. 
My father gave this to me on my 15th birthday and said I should drink it on my 15. wedding night. And you never married? Never found anyone willing to put up with me. Uh, I was a devilish rogue back then. No longer devilish rogue. It seem. This a man devilish is so rogue cute. turned priest. Sounds like quite the tale. It is, but some wounds run deep, and it does no good to reopen them. No. Fair enough. That's nice, though. He moved on with his life, and he's okay with where he's at Friend now. Friend Apocalypsis, tell me, what did you mean when you said this place was soon to be gone? Uh-oh. Exactly what I said. Even in your isolated state, you must have heard of the Emperor and his crusade to stamp out religion and belief in the supernatural. Soon, right. he and his forces will arrive to tear this place down. Don't they? This is interesting because I feel like. But it makes no difference. From everything I've seen, they worship the emperor like he I is believe. God. And no amount of hectoring from some warmongering despot will sway me. Oh. That is an obstinate point of view. So it is, is this faith. before shit hits it the fan? Not as fickle as you would posit, eh? Faith. A willing belief in the unbelievable without proof. Yep. Faith's strength is just that. It requires no proof. Belief is enough. That is why the Emperor wants rid of it, then. You call faith powerful. I call it dangerous. Think of what people in the grip of faith have done in the past. A lot All the of bad things. Down the and some good things. Be traced back but a lot of bad faith. things. Faith is both the causation and the justification for so much evil. Don't blame Faith. Don't blame you Faith on this. provoke me? I am no longer a violent man. Such a goal will be boring and fruitless for the both of us. If this is all you are here for, I suggest you leave. You are right, of course. I am being discourteous, and I apologize. You are. I came to learn of this place, not antagonize its guardian. Good for mm. him. I accept your apology, Apocalypsis. Yeah. Do you wish to see the church? He doesn't seem like a bad guy. I do. At least not yet. Then come with me. I wish to see the church. Give us a tour. Give us a tour, priest man. It looks pretty in here. I like it. I'm a big fan of the angles. The angles of the angels, you know what I'm saying? Mm -mm. They should really get drunk, though. Like, this would be good. Like, if there's a couple bottles left, drink all of them. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Folga Lapis. What's that? Oh. So this is a holy stone? It is, yes. Why? Why is it the Folga Lapis? I mean, why is it holy? Was it deposited on the ground by your god? Was a man martyred hmm. here? Or did some young girl receive some sort of revelation while praying at its base? Nothing so bland, rest assured, friend Apocalypsis. Thousands of years ago, a local holy man who was blind was walking in the hills hereabouts when a sudden storm came in over the western ocean. He hurried back hmm. down to the village below, but it was a long way. And the storm broke before he could reach safety. And then he fell the for a really long time, the rolled in the, the whole way. The stone, at the height of the storm, in the lee of the heavens. Oh. When he thought all was lost, he was lifted up and heard the voice of our creator. Okay. And so he saw the stone wreathed in a blue fire, in which he Whoa. saw the face of our creator. That's wild. Did you not say he was blind? Hey. Ah, he was blind no longer. Uh, the power of our creator cured him of his affliction. That's he immediately crazy. Ran back to the village and told the people there of the miracle. And then? The holy man returned to the Folgalapis and instructed the townspeople to build a church around it. The story of his healing soon spread. Oh. Within but a few years, thousands were crossing the silver bridge to visit the shrine, for a spring had begun to flow from the base of the stone, and its waters were said to be imbued with healing properties. Oh. And I wonder how much the priests benefited from so it all. So they built the church around the stone. And what? It could cure diseases? Mend broken limbs? So the church records say. This bathing chamber was constructed around the stone, and people across the land came to bathe in the sacred waters while they still flowed. Bathe in it. I have heard tales of a similar nature in the Far East. A young girl claimed to have seen a holy vision of a woman while bathing near the springs closest to her home. Was she hot? She described a woman 
conspicuously similar to the holy woman of a religious order was she hot, of which though? her family was a member. Bathing houses was were established she hot, there, too. Though? But for fear of diminishing the rate at which the owners of the bathhouses could admit pilgrims, the waters were only changed once a day. The dying and diseased Ugh. came in droves, Oof. passing through that water in the hundreds every day. So I'm sure you can imagine what a horrible slop it was at the end. Oh, they God. were but pools of blood, <gasps> sloughed off skin, scabs, bits of cloth and bandage, oh. an abominable soup of malady. Oh my God, the no! The only miracle was that anyone emerged alive. Such a miracle was infrequent at best. My gosh. I cannot justify the actions of the greedy or the impure. I can assure you that did not happen here, if that is your concern. Are you allowed to touch it? Hematite from a banded ironstone formation, exposed by landslip during the storm, most likely. That would explain the strike. It seems to me that your holy man was not blinded by any physical defect, but was a result of hysteria or earlier mental trauma. It is not unheard of to be cured in such a manner. Are you attempting to debunk the miracle this church was founded upon? It was our creator's will. And if your explanation were to substitute mine, the nature of the event is still what I would call a miracle. Damn, dude. The creator's face was seen. His voice was heard. It is a malicious thing to seek to destroy another's faith, Apocalypsis. Yes. I do not aim to be malicious. Science shouldn't discount religion or the other way around. Could have happened without the intervention of a godly power. You, keep you think that. that the way we perceive the world is the way it actually is, but you cannot perceive the external world directly. Indeed, none of us can. Instead, we know only our ideas or interpretations of objects in the world. The human brain is a marvel. The human brain is priest, fucking buck wild. And it is especially adept at constructing images of faces and voices from limited information. That it is. Imagine your holy man sheltering from the storm in the cover of this great stone when the lightning bolt hit, the fire and the noise, the pounding surge of elemental energy. Isn't it possible that an already religious man might, in such circumstances, perceive sights and sounds of a divine nature? We do it all the time. When you wake with dread in the dead of night, is that darkness in the corner not an intruder instead of just a shadow? My God. The creak of a floorboard, the tread of a murderer? Hmm. I agree. The human mind okay. is a powerful thing. All right. What I value most, however, is the ability to reflect upon the past and reach conclusion that that tap against my window was a natural occurrence and not a murderer come to kill a lonely priest. Given yep, the origins that would be and nice. evolution of religions in the human species, it seems a far more convincing and likely explanation that it was a figment of happenstance and a creative mind. A holy man might make a miracle of simple it good fortune. It definitely because could of a be. Predisposition to believe in the supernatural. Don't you agree? No. No. I do not. No. Really? You strike me as an intelligent man. He is also a Why religious can man. You not concede at least to the possibility <gasps> of such an explanation. <laughs> because I too have seen my God and heard his voice. Nothing can compare with knowing personally and completely that the divine exists. Fair. Ah, personal experience. The most valued kind. Tell me, where did you receive this vision? On a battlefield in the lands of the Frank. Oh. Many, many years ago. The Frank were brought into unity long ago. The last battle was fought nearly half a century ago. You must have been a young man back then. I, I was. Young I mean, if foolish. he was fighting, yeah. Young and foolish. Hardly <laughs> a prime candidate for divine intervention. But then I've found that the least likely to receive it are often the most in need of it. I have mm. read your holy book before. Mm -hmm. To me, most of the men who appear on the pages are far from ideal role models. Perhaps I should not be so surprised the Ooh. devilish rogue sits with me today. Ooh. Oh, him disappearing scared me. I was like, has he been a ghost the whole time? Doesn't make sense, but I thought it. <laughs> What's that? Questions? Your tone may be pleasant, but your spirit is nothing but adversarial. 
You say you wish to learn of me, and this church will come. Let us joust with words, thrusting and parrying one's certainties with argument and counter-argument. Dude. Say what you will. That but turn of sunrise, phrase, let us joust with words, is fucking so return. good. Chef's kiss. This is my intention. I love that. I have other matters to attend to. It's like the to, perfect way to put it. Tonight, I have to talk with you. My adversarial spirit is not born from any mal-will towards you, Uriah. My malcontent is born from my love for humanity. I would see our species in an age of wonder without these constant wars and the ignorance that blankets our kind like a plague. I would see us ascend. I would see all of our kind raised to the status like of God that is worshipped throughout the galaxy. But we are enslaved to the fantastical notions that reside within that book of yours and all Damn. the others like it. That damnable book in your hands is a curse. And I would see you rid of it. You go so the fucking far writing. as to mock my holy Make book too? <laughs> this damnable book provides a code by which I have lived a peaceful life. In which I have built more than I have destroyed. Helped more than hurt. My time before this book was nothing but destroying and hurting. Untold thousands more live similar lives thanks to the guidance provided by our willingness to believe in something greater than ourselves. He's really on that Tell watch. me, Apocalypsis, when we, as a species, find your vision to be a reality, what will become of us? What will unite us? Peace can only be attained through an aspiration or a common enemy. And when that aspiration disappears and we, as a species, are gods without rivals, who will we turn on? We will turn on each other, friend Apocalypsis. Your vision will bring only an eternity of war. Well, when gods clash, galaxies burn. So what would you have me say? There are more faiths than yours, Uriah, and each faith has equally zealous defenders. How many generations of conflict until your message of peace turns to a crusade against those who do not share your beliefs? Where there are differences, humanity will find them. And these differences are so fundamentally rooted in you as others' beliefs are in others. There can be no resolution without conflict. I find mad. nothing but exceptions to my eh. arguments. Never any rules by ah. which to measure them. Both How of these men are excellent debaters. In inherently hypocritical system. Your book has been rewritten, translated, and twisted to fit the needs of hundreds of anonymous authors for hundreds of years. The yep. faith is eternal, mm -hmm. but the story yep. and morals are not. One yep. man hears his dead grandfather, and he is locked away in an asylum. But oh. if he heard the voice of God, oh. he would be venerated and might well become a saint. Oh. How is this Shit. a logical and rational system? That's wild. It is my faith. Respect my beliefs as I respect yours, despite your constant slights against my life's dedication. Did you I not don't think say he's trying to disrespect joust? him necessarily. He's just trying to have a discussion. Protection? Is it not robust enough to withstand my questioning? No one else on this world enjoys such protection from scrutiny. So why should you and your faith be singled out for special treatment? Why is it that faith is being targeted for destruction? Perhaps there is enough truth behind my words that the Emperor, in all his wisdom, fears their holy power. That is also fair. Or is it because there are people too obstinate to accept that there may be I do be think that the eradication that of religion explain. is a little extreme. I have seen my god. I saw his face and heard his words in my soul. Do not expect me or anyone else to give your experience credence, Uriah, despite what you think you saw. You may believe it to be real. But just because you believe something to be true, does not make it so. I saw what I saw. I heard what I heard. That day on the fields of Frank has never lost its clarity. I relive it with every waking moment in which I am not occupied. And where in Frank did this miraculous vision take place, priest? On the killing field of Gadwere. You were at Gadwere. I. I was. Learning so much about the, this priest. I'll tell you what happened. But first, I need another drink. Yeah. He's like, I need to get a little more swifty before I can express exactly how, uh, how gnar that was. <laughs> get another bottle of wine. 
We're drinking it all tonight. No, friend Apocalypsis. This is the good stuff. Oh, shit. Okay. We're not okay. going to drink this Damn. Matana. Now we will drink from a glass. Oh. Oh. Bringing out the fine china. <laughs> He's so smug about it, too. The water of life. Wine? Yeah. Finally, right. spirits both you and I can believe in. <laughs> I like that. Give it a minute. Let the vapors build. It Let intensifies it the flavor. The wine has Swirl to breathe. A little. See the slicks on the side of the glass? They are called tears. And since they are long and descending slowly, we know the drink is strong okay. and full body. Okay, yeah. I know a little and bit about wine. Most of the time, I just Patience put it in my body and drink it, and I don't really care, but, for many days. you know. <laughs> it can sit for a few more minutes. Knows the drink. Feel the aromas and how they stimulate your senses. <laughs> Allow yourself. This is how it feels to chew five gum. Stimulate your senses. The memories of their origin. May I ask a personal question while we wait? Well, you've asked so many personal question, questions. Doesn't it? <laughs> Why is it you carry a timepiece that doesn't function? Oh. It is a family relic, you see. It has been with us since before even old night. No one knows when it broke, but oh. as legend goes, it ticks before disaster strikes. Oh. I never believed it. Nor did my father. Okay. When I found it, however, it was found a minute it? later than I always remembered it. Now it sits a minute from midnight. Uh -huh. My father always jested that the day it struck midnight would be the beginning of the end. If it was three minutes to midnight, it would be I've a song. I've kept it for decades. Never once seen it budge. I check it often, as if it could warn me of danger. Mm. Wouldn't that be wild Maybe if it suddenly went... Eh? A grim portent. You seem to surround yourself with God, grim the belief. lighting in this, Raya. that specific Perhaps. shot was really good. But let's not ruin this good wine with such dour thoughts. My story has not yet even begun. We've waited That's long it. enough. Drink, friend Apocalypsis, generously. You better tell me how it tastes. Hang on to the taste before it is gone. <laughs> ah, that's a flavor I have not had in a long time. I didn't think any remained. It is an old bottle. One I rescued from the ruins of my parents' home. You make a habit of huh. keeping old alcohol around. Aye, a throwback <laughs> to my wild youth. I was fond of the drink. A little too much even, if you take my meaning. You know what happens. Many a great man has been brought low by such an addiction. Yep. Looks like it still kind of is. You said you wanted to know of Gadware? If you are ready and willing to tell me of it, yes. Willing, yes. Ready? Well, I suppose we will find out, eh? Gadwari was a bloody day. It was hard on all who were there. I understand. I may be old, and my eyes may not be what they once were, but I can still tell that you are far too young to know of Gadware. You would not have even been born when that battle was fought. Trust me, I know of Gadware. Trust me. He's so I should beefy tell you a little him. of myself first. Who I was back then, and how I came to find God on the battlefield of Gadware. If you have half a mind to hear it, anyway. He's got all night, What baby. is a story without its context? Of course. Say what you feel needs to be said. I was born in the town below this church, nearly 80 years ago. The youngest son of the local lord. Oh, so he came My from money. Come from the final <laughs> years of old night with much of their Cute. wealth intact. Ooh. And they owned all the lands around these parts, from this very mountain all the way to the mainland bridge. I wish I could say I was treated badly as a child. Look at everybody. You know, to give reason for why I turned out the way I did. I what cannot. do you mean? <laughs> I was indulged. You're funny and as a something kid. Something of a spoiled brat, given to drinking, carousing. Bouts of oh no! Looking back, I realize what a little shit I was. Yeah, that but sucks. Of course, it's a lot of old men to look at themselves in their youth and realize too late all the mistakes you know, they made. Yeah, there are some things I did that were not so hot when I was a kid. Maybe anyway, not that. I but... decided in the adolescent fires of rebellion that I was going to rebellion. travel the world and see whatever free corners of it remained. Okay. In the, of the Emperor's conquest. <gasps> 
so much of wow, the Wow, brownie! <laughs> but I was determined to find one last patch of land that wasn't yet under the heel of his thunderbolt and lightning armies. You make it sound like the Emperor was a tyrant. He ended the wars that were destroying the planet and defeated dozens of tyrants and despots. Without his armies, mankind would have descended into anarchy and destroyed itself within generations. He still is a tyrant. Perhaps humanity would have been better off that way, rather than under the shadow of this accursed eagle. Maybe the universe decided we'd had our chance and our time was up. Nonsense. The universe cares not a whit for our actions or us. Our fate is wrought by our hands and no others. Well, okay. A philosophical point we will no doubt return to. But There's a lot of a lot of philosophical life. points we will no doubt but return course, to in this, please, I suppose. Continue. Thank you. Well, after I announced my intention so to travel polite. the world, my father was good enough to grab me a generous stipend and a retinue of soldiers to protect me on my journeys. I left that very day and crossed the Silver Bridge four days later. Traveling across the land, recovering from war, which was growing fat on the labors decreed by the Emperor. Hammers beat up I like that he's like, he stopped us from and destroying the planet, and now it's like smoggy and gross. Seamstresses created new uniforms for his armies. I crossed to Europa and cruised my way across the continent, seeing the eagle stamped banner everywhere I went. In every town and city, I saw people giving thanks to the Emperor and his mighty thunder giants. But I'll be damned if any of it was genuine. It was like they were going through the motions uh, because they knew it was dangerous not what to. What teeth? I'd seen the Thunder Giants as a child, but never in the wake of a conquest. Never quite seen the reality of them before that point. I was drunk and whoring my way down the Tully Peninsula when I came across a garrison right. of the Emperor's super soldiers at a ruined Lacey's cliff honest. fortress. My damned romantic rebellious soul couldn't help but try and bait the Romantic. I called them many names. Freak. Ooh. Slave. Ooh. The minor demons of a greater devil. I even told them the Emperor's only goal was to enslave all of the human race to his own towering ego. Dude, they're gonna fucking teabag you to death. After having seen them battle in the fields of Frank, like, Can we go? I shudder to think of Please, the before you get your head chopped off. I thought I was being clever. In my own stupor, I convinced myself I was a hero. Looking back, you're gonna get riggedy, riggedy wrecked. You picked a fucking fight. Oh my god. One of the giants broke rank. I cannot believe that you picked a fight with one of them. I felt invincible as only a drunk and a fool could. Uh huh. This warrior was huge, far larger than any human. I, I mean, seen. yes. His they are huge. And heavy powered He's at dick height. <laughs> First contact with space marine. never made clearer to me than when that giant came over to me and lifted me up, tearing my shirt and upsetting me greatly. I wouldn't be I upset. I kicked at his armor and beat my fists into bloody pulps against his chest. But he just laughed at me. I screamed at him to let me go, and he did just that, telling me to shut my mouth before tossing me off the cliff and into the sea. Oh! 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 Oh, okay. By the time I'd climbed the great my steps back up into the village, Ow. they were gone. You're so lucky you're not dead, dude. I was left dude. with just myself and a hatred greater than I had ever known. You are so Stupid lucky really. you're not dead. I was asking for it, and it was only a matter yeah. of time until someone I'm glad that it, at least he can see that now, you know? And after Tali? Sometimes you just don't there, pick fights with I've people. i a lot of those years, truth be told. I was drunk most of my waking hours. I know I took a sand skimmer across the Mediterranean waste. <laughs> That's fun. The wastelands of the Nord African conflicts that Shan Kal reduced to an ashen desert. All I found were settlements that were busy paying homage to the Emperor. So I carried onwards, far into the east, to see the ruins of Ursh and the fallen bastions of Nord. Hey, that's pretty cool. Even there, however, in places so far away as to be the most desolate and remote corners of the world, I still found those who gave thanks to the Emperor and his gene-engineered warriors. I couldn't understand it. Didn't these people know they just exchanged one tyrant for another? But then again, it wasn't their choice. Humanity was on the brink of extinction. I it was what they were told they need to do. Any more clearly. Without unity and without the Emperor, there would be no human race. I cannot believe that you do not see that. 
Oh, I see it all right. I see that very clearly. That's good. The devilish rogue did not, however. Okay. I was young and full of the fires of youth. He was like, I don't give a shit about session. anything. Though they don't appreciate it, it is the function As of the to push young. at the boundaries of the previous generation, to poke and prod and establish their own rules. I was no different from any other youth. Well, perhaps a little. So you'd traveled the world and hadn't found any corner of it that hadn't sworn allegiance to the Emperor. Where did you go next? I returned home for a spell, bearing gifts I'd mostly stolen, and then set off again. But this time I went out as a soldier of fortune. Aww, instead of look at him, he's cute! I'd heard rumors of unrest in the land of the Frank, and fancy myself a renowned war hero. Okay. The Frank were a fractitious people, even before the days of unity. They were never ones to bow to invaders. Even the ones who posed as benign. Once I reached the continent, I had heard of Havelek de Gras in the Battle of Avalroy and rode straight for the town. All right, let's go. Avalroy, a town poisoned <laughs> by the bitterness of a madman. He's like, I can't skill believe fell this. Far bitch. short of his ambition. Now, Just, that much is Oh obvious. no, why? Back then, the story was that Havelek was found wrongly accused of the brutal murder of the woman the Emperor appointed as governor. Oh my god. He was set to be shot by a firing squad when his brothers and friends attacked the local Whoa. army. Whoa! Whoa! The soldiers were torn to shreds. The death of a few locals in the fighting turned a small scale riot into open rebellion. That lot just happened there. The ugly, faster than the town had time to think what they were doing. Holy shit. But by then, it was too late. Shit just hit the fan in a big way in this, in this flashback. Oh, he knew like Hello. Hi, Nike man. The flames of the town folks' ire at the Emperor's rule. Within the hour, a hastily formed militia had stormed the local army headquarters and seized the weapons within. Damn. None of the soldiers survived. Damn. You are aware that Havulik did assault and murder the woman. I learned that later, yes. By then, it was far too late to do anything about it. Poof. By the time I reached Averroi, full of piss and vinegar for the coming fight, Havulik had rallied the a number piss of and local townships with corpse and amassed here. quite an army. It was magnificent, friend Apocalypsis, for it had been everything I had so desperately searched for. Icons of the Emperor being torn down, oh, colorful shit. buntings hanging from every window, bands playing in the streets constantly uh -oh. while Havelek and all of us, his soldiers, marched up and down the town. I swear it felt like we were an army of devilish, daring youths. We should have been training. We should have prepared. But our courage was buoyed up by the festivities, and more and more towns rose up against the Emperor's rule by the day. Within the week, we had amassed good. an army of nearly 40,000 strong. And truly, it seemed, I had found my glorious rebellion I had so desperately created. Glorious rebellion. It was heroic and courageous and dangerous, and it spoke to my romanticism for the heroic freedom fighters of old. We were absolutely sure that we would be the spark that would light the fires of rebellion all across the world and see the autocrat tumble from his self-imposed rule. Then we heard that the Thunderbolt and Lightning armies were marching from the east, and we set off in grand procession, making all due haste. Havelek leading us from Averroi was a joyous day. I'll never forget it. The laughter, the kisses from the girls, and the spirit of our kisses shared Kisses from the girls, oh as we my lord. About. That's some spicy shit. In but a week of marching, we reached Gatway and set up our defenses atop a line of hills directly in the path of our enemies. Uh huh. We had all thought ourselves tactical geniuses, holding this strategically advantageous position. Uh huh. Had we any training and discipline, it might have made a difference. We I'm very nervous. Ground, and both of our flanks were anchored on strong positions. On the left were the ruins of the Ganduere Bastion. On the right, the desolate marshes through which nothing could pass. Oh no. You must have known it was madness to engage the Emperor's armies. Yeah, right? That's what I'm saying. You had no hope of defeating them. His warriors were yeah. bred for battle and spent every waking yeah. moment in combat training. Perhaps See? we knew. Maybe we didn't want to think about it. We were so full of hope, Fair. of optimism, we wouldn't allow ourselves to even consider defeat. When the Emperor's armies came into sight, we were nearly 50,000 strong, and we faced an army estimated at a mere 5,000. It was hard not to feel uh, that we could win the day, especially with Havelek riding uh, up and down and firing our blood. His brother tried to calm him, but it was far too late. Mm. 
Uh oh. Eventually, oh, no. maybe a kilometer from our position, the giants halted their advance. We oh. should have waited too. Instead of letting oh, spirit no. of the die, they charged down the hillside like mad, glorious fools, screaming war cries and waving swords, pistols, and rifles over our heads. It was maybe six or seven ranks deep, and we only covered half the distance before. Oh no. Just shouldered their weapons and opened fire. Their battle cry is way bigger than yours is, baby! By God, the noise. I'll never forget it. The first volley was thunder that ripped down the line. And our first Oh my God, splat, splat, okay! Sweet. Each of their bullets was that is that ripped a hell of a gun. And burst men open from the inside like wet sacks. Turned to shout, struck in the back of the head, <gasps> and fell forward into the ruptured body of another man. Oh no! Rolling over, I felt the back of my head and realized I had been hit. Oh! Shrapnel lost oh. some fragment, I figured. I could feel myself Owie. losing blood, weakening by the moment. Now the initial shock in the first few seconds had passed. The screaming began. The charge had ground to Everybody a Everybody fucking run. The Everybody get the fuck out of there. Everyone's just trying to Fear. run. Oh my god. As the reality finally 50,000 people trampling each other. Done. Now, yep. The Thunder Warriors took their turn to charge. Uh oh. They broke into a run. Uh oh. Oh fuck. Feet. Most of those who had fallen. Fucking chain swords out. Mm. Crushed beneath a giant. Oh. They all were unsheathing their swords with serrated edges and motorized blades. Yep. The roar out of the nightmare it was. Holy ass! We had been defeated in the opening volley, but these warriors were without mercy. Nope. Havelek had somehow survived. You poked the fucking the bear, and the bear's not having it. Wounds. And as I lay on my back dying, I watched him stare dumbfounded as the leading thunder cleaved him in two oh. with a single swoop oh. of his chain. Oh. Looking back at Havelek's army, I saw my terror mirrored on the face of every man and woman left. Who were all begging for mercy, throwing oh my down their God. weapons, trying to surrender, but the slaughter continued, heedless of their. Powers. I mean, when you're bred for battle, you don't give a fuck. They marched right up to them and hacked into them without mercy. All those people were cut apart so quickly oh and brutalized with such economy of force, I couldn't believe so many people could die in so short a Dude, time. Dude, if I was you, I would be pretending to be dead right now. Just lay back down and be like, it I'm was a corpse. Mechanized butchery. Oh if I my could have God! But I'm not ashamed to say I lay there, listening to the awful sound. Nope, it definitely of wasn't. And the wet sound of flesh yep. being shorn from bodies. And you really thought you could be a hero? And open bellies. Until the mercy of dark Good. Came me. And then he finally passed out. That must be a relief. When I woke, surprised I'd still lived. I just passed the fuck it was out. dark. That in the is distance, I heard the absolutely terrible. The warriors drifting across the fields, along with the smoke mm. of victory pyres. Havelek's army had been destroyed. Not routed, not put to flight. Destroyed. Holy shit. In less shit. than an hour, 50,000 men and women had been killed. That's such a large I never number. Of any other survivors. Whoa. Weak. And laying in a field of human parts, I began to weep once more. I was in agony. How is this man not literally driven insane? How absolutely pointless my life had been. The heartache and ruin I had visited upon others in my reckless pursuit of I cannot believe that he, out of all those people, just woke up. I wept for my family and myself. At least he sees it now. And that was when I realized I wasn't alone. Uh huh. And then. Who was with you? The power of the divine. Uh huh. You saw God. I opened my eyes and saw a golden face above me. <gasps> a face of such radiance oh. and affection that my tears were no longer shed for my self-pity, but for His beauty. The light radiated from the figure, and I averted my eyes for fear I'd be blinded. Whoa. I'd been in pain, yes, but now that pain was gone, uh, and I knew no, I'd I seen the face of the divine. I need to know I more. I describe that face to you. 
not with all the poetic imagery in the world Whoa. at my disposal, but it was the most exquisite thing I had ever seen. I felt myself lifted up and thought this was the end. And then the face spoke, and I knew I was destined to live. What did this face say to you? Why do you deny me? Accept me, and you will know that I am the only truth and the only way. Of course, Power Armor Jesus has reply? a big, strong white man chin. Of course. I couldn't. To <laughs> utter any words would have been base. In any case, my tongue was quite stilled by the awesome vision of God. I don't think that was God, what baby. What made you think it was it God? It looked like a bitch in power armor. You were a dying man on a battlefield, surrounded by your dead comrades, and you were having an epiphany about the futility of the life you had led. Think back, priest. Surely there is another explanation? Uh-huh. I need no other explanation. You may be wise in many things, Apocalypsis, but you cannot know what goes on in my own mind. He knows what he I saw. Heard the he voice saw God. Of God and saw his That's face. what he's saying. Does the perception of events truly matter if the results are singular? Fair. I was born up and set into a deep slumber. And when I awoke, my wounds were healed. God damn. A piece of bone had been embedded in my skull, nearly a centimeter away from severing my spinal cord. Holy shit. When I rose, I searched for fellow survivors. I was alone. I decided to return to the land of my birth, but when I returned, I found my family home in ruins. Aww. The townsfolk told me Scandian raiders from the north had come to plunder my family's wealth. So they killed my brother and tortured my parents and sisters in an attempt to make my father give up the family treasures. Oh my god. My father had a weak heart and died before they could learn his secrets. Oh my I found god. My home in ruins and my family is bleached cadavers. <gasps> there were no oh amends to be made at home. All I had to remember them by was oh. their wealth, good wine, watch. and this damned watch. And good wine. I am sorrowed by your loss, Cursed Uriah. Watch. If it is any consolation, the Scandians would not accept unity and were yeah, wiped out near three that's decades ago. Horrible. I know, but I do not revel in death anymore. The men who well, killed my family good, will have been judged by God, and that is justice enough for me. Fair. That is noble of you. I took those few keepsakes from the ruins and made my way to the Could you imagine system. seeing a man just walking Thinking down I'd the street with a crazy satchel just full of wine? My life. I would have questions for Halfway this man. Halfway there, I met an old priest in need of help, in desperate search of the next caretaker of the Folga Lapis. I knew I had found my purpose. I had spent my entire life again. until then living for myself. He looks but when hammered. I saw the spire of that church, I wow. knew that God had a purpose for me. I, I mean, what else did you have? But yeah. I was saved for a reason. You could have died multiple times. To serve God, to bring his words to the people, to do good where others would not, to be a beacon in the coming dark. And that's what you've been doing here? That is what I've been trying to do, but the Emperor's promulgators traverse the globe with his message of denouncing the supernatural and mm. criminalizing the devout. I assume that is why you are here, and why none of my congregation have come here tonight. You would be correct. Oh! In a manner of speaking, I have come to try and convince you of the error of your ways. Oh! To learn of you and to show you that there is no need for any divine powers to guide humanity. What well, happened to his congregation, though, on then? Terra, and it falls to me to offer you this chance Whoa. to embrace the new way willingly. Oh, no. Or, he gonna there kill is him. no or, my dear priest. Come, let us go back out into the church as we talk. It's fucking rough. I want to teach you of all that belief in gods has done for humanity down the ages. The bloodshed, the horror, and the persecution. I will tell you of this, and you will see how damaging such Boy has a is. hard fucking job. Then you will go on your way, friend Apocalypsis. Mm. It is my sincerest hope that we will go together. Uh-oh. I'm pretty sure you know it's his Jean job Brady? to kill people. Why? Very little is not Jean Brady these days. <sighs> With a name like that, you you're not just a normal man. <laughs> city of Zozer in the Nordafric conclaves? 
Yes, I have been to Zosa. Oh, At least wow. I saw what my guide told me were its ruins. A traveled man. True. Not much is left. Anyway, the scientists of Zosa sought to end a great famine that was sweeping the North Africa conclaves through gene-breeding animals that would grow more quickly and more easily in their harsh climate. Interesting. When one of the local cults caught wind of the gene breeding, they saw it as an affront to their god. They were very much against the modification of genetics because they thought that their god had designed them as they were, and it was a sin to meddle in such things. Yeah. The, this cult, uh, the Zozorites, saw the Zosarites. lead scientist and a Pashtar as the next embodiment of evil seeking to defile all the people by feeding them the embodiment of sin. They went mm. on a rampage, stabbing and clubbing any Apashtar they could find. Oh, of course, no. the Apashtar retaliated, and rioting spread throughout the city and left close to a so thousand people So much rioting dead. everywhere! They did not again try to gene breed new farm stock, and untold thousands more died to the family. Oh, no. Is there a point to that story? Absolutely. It what do you mean? Religion and tells a universal tale of religious behavior that has been reoccurring since the beginning of human uh -huh. history. Yeah. Religion actively impedes forward progress by producing stubborn <sighs> people who fear advancement. A far-fetched well, example for that's the very harsh. One freakish story cannot serve as proof of theory that all belief in the divine is a bad thing. Why don't you tell the story of the time a church organized a program to help the poor and the sick and the dying? Why do you not tell a story of when faith and religion gave a community the strength to stick together and help each other through all night? Through faith comes character, and through our character there is moral strength. I'm nervous how Without the end of this guidance, is gonna go. The world would descend into anarchy. A secular government with strict laws and programs could accomplish all that you have listed without creating stubbornness or creating a dependability on a church that would impose further taxes upon the poor and make waste of otherwise productive time. Okay. The idea that the church is a moral compass just isn't true. Where the church is strong, it causes cruelty. Intense belief produces intense hostility. Oh. Only when faith ooh. loses its force can a society hope That's very to become true. humane and progress. I don't believe that. My holy book gives instructions on how to live a good life. It mm -hmm. has lessons humanity needs. I have yes. benefited greatly, as have the people in the town below. Have Are you? Sure? you? I have read your holy book, and uh -huh. much of it is bloody and vengeful. Ooh. I suspect an outside spectator would view the people on those pages not as exemplars of proper behavior, but terrifying examples of corrupt morals. Ooh. You are missing the point, Apocalypsis. Much of the text is not meant to be taken literally. It is symbolic or allegorical. But people do not take it exactly symbolically or allegorically. The priests pick and choose which bits of your book to take literally and which to read as symbolic. And that is a personal matter, not a divine one. You may be pure and noble, Uriah, but all too often a priest is a man who is cruel and purely seeking personal gain. Religion has no place in a fair and just society. Uriah just wants the wine. In ages past, a frightening number of people took these holy books absolutely literally. Yes. So the untold misery and death because they truly Doing crazy the things. They read. The history of religion is a horror story, Uriah. And if you doubt it, Ouchies. look to the past and see what humanity has done in the name of their gods over the millennia. In ancient oh boy. times, ritual sacrifices were commonplace. To appease their vile gods, priests drowned women and children in sacred wells and cut the heart out of their slaves and prisoners. My God. They would drive a pile through a maiden's body to pacify a non-existent creature. You cannot seriously compare my religion to such barbarism. Well... You describe ignorant savagery, not religion as I would name it. Can't I? It was never uncommon for religions founded in this region of the world to use their faith to justify conquest without mercy. The rich desired more power, 
but the peasantry would not fight for their kings and their lords just to further the interest of those who ruled them so cruelly. The lords knew this. They guised their political objectives with religious significance by the just and marvelous judgment of God, and the people fought fervently for a cause with no merit. Oh extremism no, holy extremism. shit, I did not ever, and ever consider that. Was swift. Now that war had been initiated on religious pretexts, the conflicts escalated and the battling continued until little was left but fields littered with the bones of the foolish right. and the deceived. Oh, man. But sorrow, more remorse was never tolerated for such a thing. As the crusade was, God's will, after all. Ew. Oh, this, this guy's getting angry. History. As you say, the nobles were bent on furthering their own interests. You could say that, but they used exactly. religion as an excuse, but in their greed, they would have committed these atrocities one way or another. You cannot vouchsafe the truth of events so lost in the mists of time. I would agree with you, had they not repeated the act nearly a century later. Oh. Warriors laid siege to the sex stronghold in ancient Franck, and when the city fell, the generals asked their leader how they might tell the faithful from the traitors among the captives. The leader, who followed his god, yes, the mask, ordered please. the warriors to kill them all. God will know his own. 20,000 men and children were lost to faith that day. Oh! Of course, for fear that any may escape, an organization was given absolute power over the people, with its sole purpose to hunt down those who ran. <sighs> They brought about Fuck. hysteria and tortured any they so pleased. Great, they love that. Stop once all their enemies were hunted down and killed either. They too no, had convinced of course. themselves of their They just holiness. wanted to keep going. They exterminated whole towns on the mere suspicion of witchcraft or treachery. Oh my god. When it was all said and done, near 100,000 were dead. Most of them were innocent. If you oh. allow me, I shall turn your logic back upon you, Apocalypsis. Okay. Had it been a I'd love it. I'd love to hear the other. They decided they required more land and riches. Do you truly believe they would have decided against it for no reason other than that there was no divine justification? Look back upon your great knowledge of history. Do you truly not recall any secular government that drove itself mad with suspicion of treachery and created a state ruled by surveillance and torture? You chop apart history, take what you so desire, and insist I behold the bloody remains. Humans are flawed, and religion is more often a convenient scapegoat than a corrupting force. If you I think humans that, are just corrupt have been shut away naturally. In for far too long, priest. All the dictators deposed through unification were mass murdering ethnarchs who killed millions in their constant warring burning away all hope of progress. Cardinal Tang's programs and death camps saw millions dead in the Indonesia block. He died but 30 years ago and claimed his entire life had been served in the name of a greater power. Whoa, whoa, whoa. You fixate on the blood and Weird. death and forget all the good that could be achieved through faith. Hmm. Uriah. You only see religion for what it can be. I am seeing it for what it most always is. Savagery pervades our world, and it is sustained by ignorance and crude belief. It is true that before the descent of old night, religion had lost its power over the people. But like the worst kind of poison, it lingered and fostered division amongst those who endured. Without belief, divisions blur over generations. New generations mingle, intermarry, and forget ancient wounds. It is only belief in gods and divine entities that keep them alien to one another. And anything that divides people breeds inhumanity and cruelty. Religion is the canker in mankind's heart that serves such an ugly purpose. I have heard all that you have had to say, friend Apocalypsis, and I have finally heard enough. Yes, people have done terrible things to one another in the name of their gods, but yeah. they have done terrible things regardless of the recourse of their beliefs. 
Yes. An acceptance of gods and an afterlife is a vital part of what makes us who we are. If it's you really take that important away from to humanity, some people out there, what do you yeah. suggest takes its place? In my many years as a priest, I have ministered to many dying people, and the emotional benefit of religion's power to console the wounded and the dying, as well as those left behind, cannot be underestimated. There is a flaw in your Sometime logic, Sometimes it is just what a person needs, religion's power and that's okay. Religion's power to console gives it no credence or validity. It might be a comfort to a dying man to believe that he will go to some bountiful paradise of endless joy. Mm-hmm. But even if he dies with a wonderful smile on his face, it means nothing in the grand scheme of things. Better that less would die due to the removal of religion than each zealot die with a smile on their face. Maybe, but when my time comes, I will die with God's name on my lips. Uh-oh. Are you afraid to die, Uriah? No. Uh-oh. Truly? Oh, Truly. I'm nervous. I have my share of sins, but I've spent the greater part of my life in the service of my God, and I believe I have served him faithfully. All right. So why is it that when you go to these people who are dying and cling to move? their beliefs that they don't welcome the end of their life? <sighs> Surely the gathered family and friends should be of good cheer and celebrate their relatives' passing. After all, if eternal paradise awaits us, why are they not filled with gleeful anticipation? Hmm. Could it be that, in their heart of hearts, they don't really believe it? Are you ever excited to have a loved one move on or leave in search of something oh. greater? Are you ever excited to leave your family and uh -oh. friends in search of a better life? Even if it is for the best, are you delighted to leave all that you know to be thrust into the unknown? Ooh. No one is. Ooh. Life is a gift, and our chance to make ourselves into someone before our time in the afterlife. Who would give that up willingly? If you cannot see that plainly, then you are a fool. See, they both made great points. Oh, he angry now. I mean, he already was angry, but now he big angry. He fucking storming back in there, stomping around like <laughs> poor priest. He's gonna go pray. Oh, all baby. All the way, and all his actions are for the benefit of mankind, which is his people. So it is taught in the holy words of our order, and above all, there is no God one to hear you. I don't care what you say oh. anymore. You have come here to do what you feel you need to do, and I'll not buttress your ego and self-righteousness by playing along any longer. He's you done. listen to my He's words, but very, hear very nothing. Done. End the charade. As you wish. I does feel like neither no of them games. hear each other. Like they. Oh. I knew it. Oh. Oh. Bitch, I knew it. I knew that was a power armor, Jesus. I knew it wasn't. Now do you understand the futility of what you do here? You, oh my god. You are the emperor. <gasps> what? I am. It is time to go. Oh. Go. Go where? There is nowhere else for me in this godless world of yours. Holy shit! Of course there is. Embrace the new way and be part of something incredible. Look how tiny he is. More than a time where we stand on the brink of achieving everything we ever dreamed. Oh. What are you gonna do? Verona's work was never meant for darkness. Only in the light can it achieve its full potential. Whoa. Humanity is the same. And only when the suffocating shadows of a religion that teaches us not to question is gone from this world will we see its true radiating brilliance. He's an angel. I will miss this place. In time, My brain is blowing up. An imperium of such grandeur and magnificence that this will seem like a pauper's hovel. Now, let us be on our way. Uh-huh. I was so certain that he was just gonna fucking kill, like, dome him, like... Fucking stand behind him, pop, pop, you know? Oh, why am I getting emotional? <laughs> oh, no! My god! <laughs> oh, that's...
that's so sad. Oh my God! You say you stand for reason and the advancement of understanding, but here you are destroying a repository of knowledge. And Some art. Some things are best forgotten. And I hope you have foreseen the consequences of a world bereft of religion. Oh. I have. Of my dream. My God. Dream of man that exists without recourse to God and the supernatural. A united galaxy with terror at its heart. A united galaxy. There it goes. Indeed. The so United Galaxy. On terror. Woo! It is time to reclaim humanity's lost empire among the stars. Whoa. With you at its head, I presume. Of course. Nothing of such grand scale can be achieved without oh. a singular vision at its heart. Least of all, the reconquest of the galaxy. God damn. There is a place for you at my side, Uriah. You are noble and your heart is true. Yes. We have need of iterators who would spread my imperial truth across the stars to uh -huh. all these planets without guidance. I can submit to no imperial truth. My entire life has been altered by that best of misunderstanding. Yeah. At worst, my life has been spent following a lie. Oh, fuck. But you know what? It doesn't matter that my life has been one massive oh. I came here with my heart open and empty. There goes the stone. The spirit of my god had entered my soul. And the holy stone. Love. My devotion was my salvation. And I have spread a doctrine of love and forgiveness. There it goes. No amount of words and tricks may change that. Even now, despite this revelation, my heart is filled with love. There is no resentment. Oh my god. In my heart. What makes faith so powerful, Emperor, is that it requires no proof. Belief is enough. I feared such a thing. I wish you would join my great crusade, Uriah. Soon I shall expand my Imperium to the furthest corners of the galaxy. With all my sons beside me, I need men like you. You make a virtue of commitment and purity. Did you not just speak to me of the horror of the Crusades? Whoa. And what evil men do in the name of purity? Yeah. You are no better than the holy men you were telling me That's about. That's what I've been thinking. The difference is that I know I am right, Uriah. Spoken like a true autocrat. Whoa. You misunderstand, Uriah. I have seen the narrow path that humanity must walk to survive. This oh, fuck. Is must begin. It is a dangerous road you travel. To deny humanity a thing will only make them crave it more. I see no reality in which your goals do not lead us to disaster and ruin. Beware Man. your subjects do not begin to see you as a god. I truly hope, in the name of all that is divine, you are right. Uh -huh. But I dread the future you forge. I wish only the best for my people. I believe you, Apocalypsis. But I cannot be a part of it. Are you? Oh my god. The drama! He's gonna walk into the fire? I had a feeling. Is it gonna tick? Oh. Oh my god, you're literally just walking in. Oh my god. He spent all night convincing him how sad is that is that it oh i have feelings oh, i have feelings oh oh okay we're still going how is it still standing Now that discussion's just gonna be in your brain for the rest of eternity. That's crazy. Oh my gosh. Is he gonna be in there? Oh. 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 Well, now I understand.
understand the title. Holy shit! Oh my god! I have so many feelings! That last tick got me. That last tick, damn it. Fuck, I didn't expect all of that. The fucking world building in Warhammer is insane. Like, there's just so much of it. Okay, well, let me just... A plus to all of this, to all of the, all the people that worked on this, because goddamn, that was so, so well done. It was a jousting match between two people who were so wholeheartedly passionate about what they believed, but in opposite directions. And like I said, in times, they were right. But they were both right, and they're both extremes. Now I'm gonna have to go watch something funny. I need a comedy now, before I go to bed. Some men you just cannot convince. Ever. And that's okay. Thank you for all your patience and support throughout the production of this film. It has been a pleasure and a privilege. But the Emperor's Path does not end here. This was our pilot episode. Please consider supporting us on Patreon so we may see through this to the end. Thank you. Holy shit, dude. What's happening? Is this more? What's going on? Fucking tight. I like captain, it. Accept your role in this. Bro. Do you promise to lead your men into battle and conduct them? I love his accent. My god. No matter the ferocity or ingenuity of the foe? Do you swear to crush the insurgents Ooh. of 6319 despite all they might throw at you? Do uh. you pledge to do honor to the 16th? Oh my god, the line work in this shot is so Emperor. cool. On this matter and by this weapon, I, Captain Garvia Loken of Ooh. the Lunar Wars, swear it will be so. <gasps> That's so cool! <laughs> then rise, brother. There is work to be done. You got stamped! My god. Holy shit. Okay, I'm taking this out. It's time to talk. It's time we talk about things. Ugh. That was really sweet. This was a really, really sweet story, and I absolutely loved it. And I appreciate this whole entire hour and 11 minutes that I got. Not three minutes, not five minutes, not seven minutes. I got an hour and 11 minutes. That was a fucking journey that we just went on. Wow, my brain can't even think. That was amazing. I love debate. I love speaking about things. I really love, we don't do that anymore. We don't joust with our words. We don't debate, we don't, we don't have intellectual fights like that. Really taking d religion and a different belief and two opposing people that have completely different opinions of something and putting them together and then going back and forth, having a civil conversation. I feel like so much of the Space Marine, like, what they put off is so, like, feels like religious, religious zealotry. So seeing that he was trying to, to, get rid of that and that ends up being the vibe in the future is wild. Like, I don't know. It, it really, really, really drives home to me that like, there are no good guys in Warhammer. Like, everyone sucks. <laughs> and it doesn't matter what belief you have, what, you know, your religion is, if you have a religion or not, you know, it, to watch something burn down like that, of something you believe in, or if you don't, if you just, all that history being burned down just made me emotional. That was... He just demolished the whole church. He fucking knew it. I'm sure everybody else knew it though, as well. I mean, obviously I caught on a little bit later than everybody else did, but that's okay. I could feel that there was gonna be like a little twisty twisty, like a little flip, you know what I'm saying? But I don't, I did not expect that to like literally be the emperor. I like, when when you saw the light, I was like, oh yeah, it's fucking power armor, duh, of course it is. But like, 
You know what I mean? At one point I was kind of like, my brain just switched off and was like, this is real life and not just a Warhammer video. But I think that's what makes it so powerful and impactful and I don't know, I, I loved it. I know you would drink all that wine. You cannot, there's no way. If they were burning a whole church down and they're like, you want the wine? I'd be like, fuck yeah, we're getting drunk tonight. You cannot deny me that. In case you're wondering, that's how much I drink. Thank you guys so much for re recommending this video. If you have other Warhammer stuff that you'd like us to react to, make sure to drop it in the comments. If you were in the premiere, congratulations on being here. I love you, you're wonderful, you're extra bonus spicy hot. I know this is long, take a break, get a snack, grab some food, stretch your legs out, and then at least maybe go say hi to the girls on Twitch. Make sure to like this video if you haven't already. You guys know the spiel. I feel like this is almost inappropriate to say it's such a impactful video at the end, you know? I feel like saying, like, comment, and subscribe sounds so weird, but you guys know. And you know it means the world to us. And you mean the world to us. I'm amazed and I don't know what else to say. Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting us. And thank you for being on this journey. We love you, okay? Have a great one.